Hey creatives, I've got an acrylic paint share for you today and I'm working in my junk journal. Now most of today is pretty much an experiment for me, so come and join me and see how it goes. So I've gone and splashed out on some new acrylic paints because I really wanted to try these. They're nice and iridescent and I thought they'd be fun to give them a go. And I know that some of you already use these paints, so do share your experiences with them. I would love to hear more about how you get on with them. And for those of you looking to try them out, as usual, I've got links to them in the description and below this video. So this page has already got a layer of gesso on and all I'm doing is applying the paint with the finger as you can see. So I'm using some really simple mark making tools today for this first layer of colour and texture. It's not going to be over complex. I literally just want to try it out and see how these paints react and how they play together. Now usually when I get new paints what I will do is um, in a separate book I will do some swatches just to try them out and then I'll also do some preliminary paint mixing of the colours that I've got to see how they react together and what kind of colours they make and I have already done that as you can see the results here yeah it is a little bit haphazard and um, really I should logically just do the grid have you seen the grid it's a lot easier if you use some sort of table to do it but I kind of do this very quick messy method of mixing my new colours to see how they react. So this layer is now dry and I'm just going to do some mark making and as I said really simple mark making so first one bubble wrap and I'm just pressing bubble wrap into some paint that I've spread out quite thinly and pressing it onto my page. Next up I'm just going to do a little bit of stenciling and I've just got a piece of foam and I'm using that to apply the paint through the stencil. I'm not being overly careful about it, so there will be a little bit of splodging underneath. But at this point I'm not worried, I just want to see how these paints layer. Then I thought I'd try a little bit of colour mixing, so I've picked a couple of colours that work really well together. And I'm going to use that colour dust to add some more texture to the page. And first off I've just got the inside of an old kitchen towel roll that I've cut down and I just use that for adding some random circles to the page. And this mark making is going to test out the viscosity claims on the paint as it claims to be high viscosity so it should hold its shape in whatever textures that you put into it so I just want to test that out and see how well it does hold its shape. And the shapes and the textures that I'm getting are looking good but we're only really going to know how well it performs once it's dry and if you can still see the texture there. So we can check that out at the end of the video. So I just used the bottom end of a large gelato stick to add those smaller circles and now all I'm doing is using a small palette knife to add some texture as well. Right, so that's my experiments finished with the layering up of this paint and seeing how it works together and the piece is now dry. So I thought I'd work the page up into a finished project. At this point I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the page so I thought that I'd add some different texture and see if that helped inspire me. Now I'm using washi tape and I don't know about you but I never think it sticks that well so I'm going to also put a layer of golden regular gel down first just to make doubly sure that it does stick. I don't know, maybe I'm being overly paranoid and it would be actually fine, but hey, tell me how you get on with washi tape. I would love to hear. Gel medium is now dry, and here comes experiment number two for today. Well, actually, it's experiment number two and number three. So one of the things I want to do this year is get more proficient with using a detailed brush. I often just grab for my pen. It's a lot easier to grab for the pen and draw on there. And I would like to just get better with using a small brush for those kind of details. So that's experiment number two. And experiment number three was just a different style of doing my flowers. I thought I'd have a go with something that was a bit more flamboyant than my usual style and something that was a little bit more flourishy because I kind of like flourishes and it's something I want to practice a little bit more and as this is a page already full of experiments hey what better time to just you know try it and see see what happens I have no idea how this will turn out well I am doing a voiceover afterwards so I do have some idea of how it will turn out but whilst I was filming it you know what I'm trying to say so I have no plan in my head or vision of where I want to place things. I'm basically doodling with paint and just seeing how it goes. Now I have time-lapsed this bit 
as it is a little bit long and I hope that you enjoy watching the process of the painting come together. I'm going to put some music on but there are a couple of points along the way where I do want to explain what I'm doing next because it might not be that obvious. And of course I'll catch up with you at the end as well. So I think the basic outline is finished and now what I'm doing here is I'm going to block out the areas that I don't want so that the floral design is, is more prominent. And I'm going to switch between this light lilac shade and a pink shade just to add a little bit more interest to the overall finished piece. So it won't really matter if I lose some of the line that I've already put down, it's just there to guide me and I will go back over it again in the areas that need it at the end. actually doing this painting in various sections throughout the day and foolishly I didn't put my paint onto a wet palette to 
keep them working a little bit longer so I did end up having to refresh both colors and of course you know it's not always easy to get the exact color but as this was an experiment and I'm not that worried about it I just let it be so the way that I'm blending it out is I'm just going to use water to blend and you'll see that I'll be using water a little bit more in this section I just thought I would point it out as a potential fix for if you find yourself in a similar situation for when you're doing your work. There you go, a very experimental piece. I hope you enjoyed watching it come together and hearing about some of the experiments I was focusing on and what I was trying to do. As I said, let me know how you get on with this paint, the Pebio DYNA paint. And we can see in the close up here, I mean, it is nice and shiny, it's a lovely iridescence. But I did find it had a kind of an odd smell to it, which I'm not used to. And it does seem to hold its form quite well as well. So that's good to know if you're adding texture to a piece. There doesn't seem to be a colour shift from wet to dry, so that's good. At least on these four colours that I've tried today. As to my other two experiments that I'm sharing today, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. I've got some views about it, like I've got a long way to go to make my brush work better. And I like some of the shapes I've done, but not all of them. But overall, I'm quite happy with how it turned out and I've learned an awful lot from doing it so and I hope it's some of this has helped you as well let me know how you get on with your experiments I would love to hear feel free to do all the usual liking and subscribing if you found this useful and if you've enjoyed it I'll be back with a new video in a few days time in the meantime here are some more that you might want to watch if you've missed them thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time